Agenda item two, presentation and discussion with Katie Spantana, Executive Director of the Desert Foothills Family, YMCA, regarding new programs being presented by the YMCA and its 18-month strategic plan. Awesome. Hi. Your name and address, please. My name is Katie Smintana, uh, 34250 North 60th Street, Scottsdale, 85266. I'm the Executive Director of the Desert Foothills YMCA and about 13 months into my position at the YMCA, so thank you so much for having me. Um, really trying to get out in the community and try to put a brief presentation together for you guys to tell you about what actually, oh, well, there we go. What we, what we do at the YMCA and what we've been doing uh, as we're coming up on five years. As many know, the YMCA's mission is to put Christian principles into practice through healthy programs that build a uh, healthy spirit and mind, body for all. And we challenge people to accept and demonstrate the positive values of honesty, caring, respect, and responsibility. The Desert Foothills YMCA is comprised on the Black Mountain campus, and I don't know if you recall, it is involved with the Desert Foothills YMCA, Paradise Valley Community College, and the Foothills Community Foundation. We are coming up on five years this October, if you can believe that, and I personally want to thank the town of Carefree and the Carefree residents, huge supporters of helping us get our building going, getting the Black Mountain campus going, and so hopefully this is an opportunity to show you guys what we've been doing all this time. For those that don't know, there's over 2,600 YMCAs in over 10,000 communities, over 20,000 members, and over 500,000 volunteers. Today at the Desert Foothills YMCA, we have over 2,400 membership units with over 7,000 members. Um, as you can see, we have over 1,300 family memberships, and then we divide up the next portion between adult memberships and senior memberships. And what's interesting enough is serving four communities, Cave Creek, Carefree, Scottsdale, and Phoenix. So we hit all of those. I have a staff at the branch of over 80, comprised of full and part-time staff, and over 150 volunteers who help us out. Some interesting statistics that you might find uh, helpful. Last year, we had over 266,000 visits into the facility, on average of over 1,000 a day. Um, and that's in comparison to 218,000 in 2010. So it's almost an 18% increase, which is pretty amazing. Over 50% of these visits, the members are under the age of 18 or over the age of 65, which I found really fascinating. Um, the, especially the active older adult community is a huge component that we're working on right now. Everybody thinks of the YMCA, you're a swim in a gym. We are so much more than that. So personal training. That includes one-on-one -on -one training, youth healthy living programs for our young youth and teens, functional flexibility for the active older adult community, nutrition offerings, golf conditioning programs. We offer over 90 group fitness classes a week. As I mentioned earlier, we started a new active older adult platform, which is actually comprised of our silver sneakers programs, our water fitness, jump start classes, our AOA class, which is now in the gym, had over 48 people there on Monday. So it's a great opportunity to learn balance and cardiovascular exercise, but maybe not in that intensity that some of our other programs can provide. We have over 33 different youth programs, starting at the age of itty bitties of little basketball, all the way on up to competitive volleyball, competitive basketball, um, our youth and teen department. I don't know if you're aware that we actually house the Arizona Virtual Academy and the K-12 program in our branch. So we're able to provide online learning partnered with the community um, within our teen center. We also have a variety of aquatic offerings, being one of the only recreational pools up here. We offer lessons, lap swim, recreation, swim teams, parties. So some fun little impact tips. We had over 75 unique children who participated in our Dolphins recreational swim team this summer. We served over 60 kids per day in our amazing Kids Center, and that's uh, our offering for parents. If you are in our facility, you can come in, leave your kid up for two hours while you're in the facility to work out, be involved in different programs, starting at six weeks old all the way up to age eight. And in the summer, gosh, come to amazing kids, over 100, 150 kids in that room in the summer. Um, for youth sports, our basketball and volleyball, we've served over 1,800 children in the 2013 seasons of basketball and volleyball from pre-K all the way to age 12. And an interesting fact, are all teams except for club volleyball are coached by volunteers. That's a pretty amazing uh, thing that we're very proud of. 
2013, we taught over 200 kids how to swim. This is the one that really gets me, our little nuggets every day. We served over 500 kids in our summer days in teen adventure programs. And yes, I'm knee deep in the world of summer camp planning right now, already thinking about it. During the school year, we transferred over 30 kids a day from the surrounding schools to the branch for after school activities. And you see on this picture, this is our new youth and teen enrichment center called YTEC. And it opened in September of 2013. Um, the goal of this room, this used to actually be an administrative space. And we raised a small amount of funds from members in the branch to help us. We moved all the admin people around. And we needed a separate space for the teens and the tweens. We had a ton of kids where the little ones didn't want to be with the older ones. Maybe they were too old for amazing kids. And so now they have their own space where we can provide more enrichment. When you really think about the youth development portion of our platform, what were we doing to really enrich and develop? So now we're able to offer homework help, tutoring, building futures mentoring programs as well. A neat thing that also happens in this room is the Teen Enlightenment series that are for teenagers from ages 12, 16, 17 is what we're finding. And we have different partnerships in the community where um, the local bank, National Bank, Jim McGurr just came down and did financial management with the teens. They did a checkbook, they got different Y bucks and talked about a budget. And those were some of those things that our facility couldn't provide in the past. So, and the Teen Enlightenment series, the kids actually came up with that name. So what's next for us at Desert Foothills? We are working on our mission every day through programs focusing on our three pillars of youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. Um, really exciting, for the first time in the branch's history, we actually just developed a 12 to 18 month strategic plan, and that was in concert with myself and our advisory board. We're comprised of 12 volunteers in the community that are community leaders um, and members, and I actually have five of them from the town of Carefree who are involved on my board. And they've helped us really sit down and say, okay, over the next 12 to 18 months, what do we really need to focus on? Where do we, um, are going to get the most bang for our buck in terms of our priorities? So our, we're focusing on resource management, really dealing with the fundraising aspect, how are we managing through volunteers, and all of our resources as we are a nonprofit, we've just got to continually get better in managing resources. Youth and teen development, we're constantly hearing that we need to be that youth pillar in the community, that the communities are really looking for us, especially in the teen aspect, to help provide support there. And an interesting component is volunteer and intergenerational mentoring. If you really think about the membership base of the YMCA, we are such a diverse and unique membership organization where we have young kids all the way up to those silver sneakers. And how do we bring those groups together to help each other, the young and the old, and bring in everybody. So there's some components. We've developed the strategies now, and so we're working on the tactics to make that happen. Black Mountain Partnership. So we've done a couple things together as a partnership with the Health Expo and the Women's Expo in last year. Um, we actually hold our silver sneaker classes over at FCF. And with PDCC, we've actually started a partnership with their curriculum and a nutrition class, where they do the nutrition class over at PDCC, and then they come over to the Y for a boot camp type class and personal training. Uh, we are putting together a five year anniversary celebration coming up in December and FCF is working on a new updated community needs assessment so we can make sure as an organization that we're still meeting the needs of the community and how we need to check and adjust. Um, for us, we need to continue our community involvement to continue learning and developing the right programs. So it was so great to see Jim here with Neighbors in Need. We're working closely with him, the Black Mountain Partnership. I'm intimately involved in Kiwanis working with Debbie and the team at CCUSD, the local schools, and the faith-based communities together so we can really be that pillar in the community. Our health and wellness activities coming up, we actually have a community health day on February 22nd. Um, we're hosting a special day with Foothills Caring Corps on March the 12th where we're actually opening our doors to anyone who um, needs a ride over from Caring Corps, their volunteers <coughs> or neighbors in the community, to come and take a free silver sneakers class to get them moving. We've talked a lot about fall prevention. And then the big event for us is Healthy Kids Day on April 26th. So get ready. Kids ever, over 500 kids coming is really our kickoff of summer at the YMCA. We also have a special uh, involvement in the Arizona SciTech Festival on March 15th, where we're in partnership. We are the only citizen experiment live at the Desert Foothills YMCA that we're doing the science of swimming. So we're looking for volunteers. We're looking for swimmers. If you swim the length of the pool, you can be in the study. 
Um, and we're also doing lock-ins with some of the different churches in the area, different field trips, social activities, and volunteerism. So social responsibility. We're a nonprofit. Our donations are critical to continue um, with our branch and being able to offer some of the additional free programs in the community outreach. We extended financial assistance to over 150 families last year. Over $36,000 of that was for military families and support. Um, it's also really important that we ensure that our programs are affordable and accessible to anyone that comes at the Y. So donations help keep our, our just our programs. To get a $50 eight swim lessons is pretty amazing um, that we can provide. So we're fulfilling the mission together. I know when the Black Mountain Campus started, can we put the Y and the community center together? Yes, you can. Um, impacting the community. We were just getting started. And um, your investment in Katona Care Free's investment is really paying di big dividends to four communities. So I personally just want to say thank you again for your support and the opportunity to share what we're doing. Can I answer any questions for anybody? Thank you for coming and sharing this uh, with us this evening. Council, questions, comments? You've answered all my questions. Cool. <laughs> well, I do actually have what's a lock in. A lock-in is where they will bring the kids, let's say, at 10 o'clock and at night and literally lock them in overnight. So we'll do different activities, provide food, they'll do different games, and we actually did some with the churches that they'll have um, a lot of their different youth ministry groups and they'll come and they'll be locked in the facility overnight and stay out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Much as they can, right? <laughs> Keep the trouble localized. Yes, yes. Well, but that's actually something that we've heard is up in our community, we're pretty isolated. Transportation, there's a lot of just loitering with the teens. So if we can find fun ways, like our Midnight Madness program, they come on a Saturday night at 8 o'clock till midnight and just come and play basketball, do different things in the facility. That will keep them away from drugs, keep them off the street. And if we can do that by just opening our doors, we now have open gym nights every Friday and Saturday to different ages of different, you know, each week that you can come in for free and come play gym with your own, come play basketball with your own age group in the gym. So, we're excited about Congratulations that. on what you've accomplished and uh, you. we'd like you to keep in touch with us and let us know what's going on so maybe we can uh, ask you back here in a year or so and uh, keep it. us advised about your fifth anniversary. <laughs> Absolutely, you can count on it. Thanks so much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you.